This video will show you how to solve and graph absolute value inequalities. You have already done solving absolute value equations and you will see some similarities to the setups. But because it's an inequality, there are some differences. Take a look at absolute value of x greater than 4. Absolute value just refers to the distance a number is from 0. This is asking me for what numbers are more than 4 units away from 0. Our solution will be all of the points that are more than 4 units away from 0. Well, what numbers are those? The numbers that are more than 4 units away from 0, probably what pops into your head is 5, maybe 6, 7, 8, but not just the integers. How about 5.5, 4.9, 4 4.1? Notice we're getting all of these numbers out here. We also have to look at this side because when you take the absolute value of these negatives, they become positive, and then they are more than four units away from zero. So five, six, seven, eight, etc. on the negative side. Same thing I said a minute ago, it could be all of the fractions, the, the decimals in between here. So it's these numbers going this way. Now we haven't addressed what actually happens at four. This says we want our distance to be more than four units away than from zero. Well, we can't include four. Four is exactly four units away. So the way we show this is we use a little curved parenthesis on four and we shade out here to the right. Now you might in high school have learned an open circle right here shading out to the right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just we go to this notation because it helps us with what's called interval notation. Over here, I'm going to have the same curved parenthesis on the negative four and shade out to the left. Now that is my solution. Now let's write what that is inequality wise. This right here is all x greater than 4. This is all of my x's less than negative 4. Notice we have two parts for this solution that might make you think about when you solved absolute value equations you had to set up two cases. It's the same idea here. And here's the two cases. x greater than 4 is what I would call the positive case. Positive case is the original problem as is, just with the bars removed. Take those bars away, you have x greater than 4. Notice the negative case is where there's a change. The negative case only negates the 4. We do not change the x to anything. What's inside the bars remains unchanged. But notice that used to be greater than, and now it's less than. And the reason is it's kind of like we have divided by negative 1 to create this negative case. And when you have an inequality and you solve by dividing by a negative, you must change the inequality sign around. So there's our solution. Put together into interval notation looks like this. If you're not familiar with interval notation, go back and look at the video on interval notation. This right here says I need all x is greater than 4, so I begin at 4 and I go on out to infinity. It does keep the curve parenthesis. Infinity always gets a curve parenthesis. On this side, that negative 4 is actually the end of the interval, and that's why it's at the back part of the parentheses. And what precedes it is negative infinity. And we put a little u in between here, which stands for union, or the word or, because any point in this region or any point in this region will make the original inequality statement true. So absolute value inequalities, like absolute value equations, require you to set up two cases, the positive case and the negative case. If the original problem is in this format, absolute value of x plus or minus some number greater than b, the two cases are separated by the word or, and you must remember to change the inequality sign on the negative case. It is separated by the word or. One way to remember this is this is a great tor than sign, so great tor is going to get you the or. Now why is it the word or? It's because when you set up those two cases, like I showed you on the last screen, you can have one part of the number line work or the other part of the number line works. So here's our problem, absolute value of x plus 3 greater than 4. We're going to set up our two cases. Positive case, as is, it's just like you've taken the bars away. Negative case, I've changed the 4 to a negative 4. I've changed the greater than to a less than. You do not ever change what's inside the bars. Then we just have two simple inequalities to solve. Subtract 3 from everybody. Gives us x greater than 1 or x less than negative 7. All that's left is to do the graph on this. Greater than 1 will be a curved parenthesis facing to the right because we're going to shade to the right. 
x less than negative 7 is a curved parenthesis facing to the left because we're going to shade to the left and then there's your integral notation for that. All right, more stuff inside the bars, but it's still the same setup. Positive case is as if I could just remove those bars. That's this 5x minus 2 greater than or equal to 13. Negative case, be sure you change that to a negative 13, and you change that inequality sign to face the other way. And then you have simple inequalities to solve. Add 2 to both sides, gives me 5x greater than or equal to 15, divide by 5, x greater than or equal to 3. On the right side, same process, just different arithmetic and we end up with x less than or equal to negative 2.2. Because this is an improper fraction, it's a good idea to change it either to a mixed number or a decimal so you know where to put it on your number line. To do this graph, x greater than or equal to 3, that's going to change my symbol on the 3 to be the square bracket. I am still going to shade to the right. To find this, I just have to do a little bit of estimating. Negative 2.2 is somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3, a smidge closer to the negative 2. So this gets a square bracket on the negative 2.2, and we will shade it down to the left. Interval notation, negative infinity up to negative 2.2 with the square bracket. And on this side, square bracket on the 3 out to positive infinity. The reason this is the square bracket is because it was greater than or equal to, less than or equal to over there. Infinity or negative infinity always get the curve parentheses. The rules I just went over with you only work if your absolute value bars are on the left side. Sometimes the problem begins like this. Well, I want the bars to be on the left side, so all I'm going to do is take this and just swap it around. Put the bars on the left side, put the two on the right side, but I have to maintain the meaning. The big opening is facing the 3x plus 2, so it's still got to face the 3x plus 2. This is now a great TOR problem, and the word between will be OR. Positive case is as is, just write it down without the bars. Negative case, keep what's inside the bars the same. Notice I didn't change that, stayed 3x plus 2, but what I did change is the inequality sign changed to less than, and the 2 changed to negative. At this point, these are pretty simple inequalities to solve. You're subtracting 2 and dividing by 3, which gives me x greater than 0 here. Over here, this is an improper fraction, so I rewrote it as a mix so I know where to put it on my number line. Graphing x greater than 0, just greater, will be a curved parenthesis facing out to the right. This is less than negative 1 and 1 third. Negative 1 and 1 third is between negative 1 and negative 2, about right here. And we're going to shade it out to the left. And here's your interval notation. From negative infinity up to negative 4 thirds for that part, and from 0 on out to positive infinity. When you think about checking, you can pick a point in either region, plug it in, and see if it works in the original problem. Put a 6 like in here. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. The absolute value of 20 is 20. 2 is less than 20. Pick a negative value. Pick negative 6. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. But it's the absolute value of negative 16, which turns it into positive 16, and 2 is less than positive 16. Another important fact about these absolute value problems, and that is the absolute value bars must be isolated before you separate out the two cases. So when you see a problem like this where the bars are not alone, you got to make them alone. So get rid of the minus 3 by adding 3 to both sides gives us this. The bars are still not alone because the 2 in front of the bars is like 2 times. We must undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 2. Finally, we're down to the form we want. Now we can separate out our two cases. x plus 4 greater than or equal to 2 or x plus 4 less than or equal to negative 2. I change the sign around. Simple solving, subtract 4, gives us this. x greater than or equal to negative 2, or x less than or equal to negative 6. Number line, getting ready to graph x greater than or equal to negative 2, because it is greater than or equal to, we are going to put our square bracket on the negative 2. And incidentally, you do want to put your bracket right on that line. I have a hard time doing that with this tool, but you don't want to slide it over. It needs to be right on the negative 2. We want x less than or equal to negative 6, so bracket right on the negative 6, and go this way. We're graphed out correctly, 
there's your interval notation using the same brackets because those are the brackets you used on your number line. Also, the infinities are going to get the curve brackets.